Hi there, Sharon Dammy here with Two Minute Tips, and here we are with Doreen, today's model. We're going to be giving Doreen a kind of a freshened up makeup look. Doreen is how eight, old? 87. Isn't that fabulous? And she's still into makeup. So give us a few seconds and we'll be right back to you. Okay, now with Doreen, she has a beautiful skin tone. Uh, she's obviously taken good care of it over the years and uh, she's got this amazing white hair. What we're gonna do is just even at the skin tone a little bit more for her, take a look at her brows, enhance her lash line, and use some of that Maybelline, which I understand you use now, right? Yes. <laughs> and we're going to just make sure that her lips are the fullest that they can be in the easiest and best way. So let's get started with the foundation. Now, I'm going to be using the Dual Finish Powder, which Doreen already has. Her daughter was with me once before, and she's, uh, she's got her to buy the best products for her. And that is, in Canada, it's sold under the name of DECA. In the States, you can get it under the name of Palladio, but there are other brands as well. Actually, it's Audrey Morris who makes this product, who manufactures it, and then it's sold to um, uh, distributors. Now, this is, a, this is a nice, easy, good color. As I said, she's got great skin tone, but what I'm paying attention to is around her nose and her cheeks and under her eyes here. I'm not using a primer, I'm not using liquids, I'm not using concealer. There's absolutely no need to do that with Doreen's beautiful skin. And any little marks that she does have, um, this product covers them nicely. Now, what I like to do at the, at the sides of the mouth as we age, we tend to droop down a little bit, so I'm going to add just a little bit more in the corners. And then up on her forehead. Wow, her skin's amazing. Now, could you close your eyes for me, Doreen? I'm going to cover her entire eye, as per other videos, because it's it's the best thing you can do. It avoids a primer and all those things, and it gives it evens out your skin tone. Now I'm going to take a little smaller brush, and I'm going to go into the corners of her eyes here, just to add a little bit more. And here's a spot here that I'm just going to go over, and I'm going to just not drag it on or swipe it on. It's kind of like a stipple. And look up for me, please. And we tend to get a little bit pink or a little bit red on the underside of our lids as we age. What this will do with using a small little brush like this, we'll just get rid of all of that. Okay, you can look in the camera. Now, there we have her skin tone evened up in a, in a fast and an easy and an effective way. And I've used two brushes, a foundation brush here, and then this smaller brush to get into the, uh, you know, the little, the little um, corners and ridges and things. That is all she needs. Now we're going to take a look at eyebrows. Okay, we're going to get in nice and tight to Doreen's eyebrows here. Now, as you can see, they're, she's, she's lucky she's still got hair. <laughs> the trouble is she's got some growing in places she doesn't need them. And if you notice this eyebrow here, it sits a little bit higher in the arch than this one does here. We're going to correct that. But first of all, I'm going to use this handy dandy little face shaver. And I'm, because it's easier when we're older to just shave this stuff off, in my not so humble opinion. So I'm just going to make sure and you might think that she doesn't have any hair here, but there's peach fuzz that we all have around our brows. And when you don't get rid of that peach fuzz, what it does is it tends to cause a shadow. And when you, when you groom your brows, it, it, it looks, I don't know, it gives a kind of a finishing touch to your whole face. So. I've taken off all of the peach fuzz. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this brow here. Remember, 
we don't keep hair that doesn't suit us or isn't in the right place because we took out the hairs earlier on in our life. We don't make up for it later on by hanging on to what we don't need. So I'm just going to take a few hairs off the top of her arch here. Just a few. Maybe a couple more. Good. Now the other thing that we need to do is, again as we age and sometimes our eyebrows uh, grow long, whoops, yeah just keep looking. I'm going to take a spoolie and a pair of manicure scissors. I'm going to comb the hair down and cut any long ones that I find. And comb them up. There's a two or three longies in here too. If you have a lot of long ones, my suggestion would be to, you know, don't use the weed whacker, but but do take um, do take a stronger approach to making them shorter, which is what I do personally, and it's easier for um, it, it's easier for. Well, what? It's just easier to groom your, your brows uh, this way. Now, I see a couple of strays here. I'm just going to take... You might not be able to see these on camera, but, but I can. So, if I can see them and they're in the wrong place or they're growing wildly, then just, like, lop them off. Okay, now we get the product. Now I have to say Doreen is really great. She's got herself a wonderful set of brushes and she keeps them in a container that keeps them from uh, getting mushed up and wrinkled and everything else. And uh, with these brushes, of course, she washes them once every couple of weeks, right? Right. Good. Okay, I just wanted to show you now, that. Now one thing in her brushes that she has is this flat-edged angled brush. Let me just uh, zero in here a little bit. Um, this is this is great. Now the problem with most brush sets that you get is that the flat edged angle brushes aren't flat enough. So I would suggest you look at your local art shop or find uh, brushes like Quo here in Canada where the, the, the flatness of the, of the edge of the brushes is almost like knife sharp. That's what you want. So it's worthwhile investing in, in, in another brush to add to your collection. Now as you will see, um, the, the hair color of Doreen's brows are still, she still maintained her darker color even though her hair is white. But I, so what I'm going to do is mix a cool taupe, whoops, a cool taupe and a gray together to get the combination that I need to match her brows but have it be on the lighter side. Okay, we're going to zoom right in here. So I'm going to take short feather-like strokes What happens too as we age, the skin really comes down here. So if we try to go out, it looks a little bit unnatural. So the idea is to kind of follow, follow the, 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 the brow's natural shaping uh, in, an, in a natural way, if that makes any sense at all. And I've decided right off the bat here that I'm not going to add too much of the cool taupe. I'm going to stick to the gray, the steel gray, because it is uh, giving what we need for it to give. And notice that I've just used a few hair strokes. That is all. Now I'm going to match this brow to this brow. So I'm going to go further down on her arch area here. I'm going to carry that on down so we can bring that arch down to match up a little bit more with the other side. So that's all I'm adding there, a little bit under here and some on the top. Go back over here now a little bit. Now I'm going to take the, the spoolie and I'm just going to soften that up a little bit.
and we'll pull back and see how that looks. We've, uh, yep, I think that's pretty good. Let me just add a little bit more here. And I see I need to, uh, there's a long one hanging around that hid before, so I got to get that little sucker. There we go. Okay, so that's a nice natural uh, color for her, keeping within her color range. So now what I'm going to do is use a clear mascara and comb her brows up and over. And I'm going to hold on to those. Let me see. Yeah. I'm going to put my fingers and rest there for just about to the count of five so that it kind of glues them in place, so to speak. So if you have any wild ones, the, what happens with the, with the uh, mascara is it, it kind of holds it in place for you and kind of just, you know, tames the little suckers. We're just okay. going to stop at this point and take a look at Doreen. Um, she's had her skin toned, evened out, and her eyebrows kind of shaped and just filled in uh, in a way that is natural. Now, if she didn't put any more makeup on, this would be lovely. Uh, but we are going to add more. And I'm going to uh, enhance the blueness of her eyes together, class, the same old way, using neutrals. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to that flat-edged angled brush that came with Doreen's kit, and I'm going to, oh, the other end, bada boom, uh, and I'm going to mix a, the gray and the taupe uh, together, and maybe throw in a little bit of black. We'll just, we'll just see what we end up with. Now close your eyes, Doreen, for me, and I, what I'm going to do, like in, I do for just about everybody, is I'm going to just deposit some eyeshadow along her lash line. And then I'm going to smudge it up. And add a little bit more weight at the outside corner. Okay, can you open for us and just look? But you see, you can't see too much, but you, you, you can see that the strength of her eye is coming through. Okay, let's do the other one. Close. Yeah, this brush will work out perfectly for you, Doreen, uh, for, use, for, for this purpose. Very good. open. Okay, now you can see how that adds some strength to her eye. Now what I'm going to do is go in and use a combination of a, of a medium gray and that cool taupe. Look up for me and I'm going to just put it on the outside bottom lash line. Just in the corners. Yes, Mama likes. Now, one of the reasons I also like to use this approach is as we age, our eyes tend to tear a lot. So avoiding mascaras is a smart thing to do. But when you can put um, some intensity along your lash line, you still get that intensity in a soft way, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take the fluff brush and go back into that cool taupe, close your eyes, and I'm just going to, going to add a little bit more to the outer corners, and I'm going to go past your eye line, and I'm going to just smoke and smudge that up, and look up for me. So when we pull back, 
we can see that her eyes have been enhanced uh, it, so that they, they're becoming, the, the, the eyeball themselves are a little bit bluer and the actual lash line is standing out a little more. So what I'm going to do is you've, uh, you've anybody who's watched my videos before knows that I really like to underline the upper water line with either a gel liner or a gel pencil because it gives just a little bit more weight to the eye without it looking harsh and without really seeing it. And especially with the older eye as we age, as our skin becomes fuller on the lid, it and we curl or do anything with our lashes, they tend, it tends to turn up so we see the whites of their eyes, so to speak. So what I'm gonna do with this pencil is go along her waterline, but at the base, at the base of it, and um, I'm going to add a little bit to her lashes. So just look up for me. took into camera and we'll come a little bit closer. I've gone back to using the Annabelle and I'm using Annabelle uh, Metal Days. Uh, it works really well in, in my not so humble opinion. Okay so we'll do the second eye here. No we don't have the third eye that we know of. I need right in on my forehead. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, now just look straight ahead for me. Look straight down a bit, a little bit. Now I'm just going to go over her lashes. Just look straight ahead. I'm just going to do this one again with this pencil. Great. Now I'm going to take that flat-edged angled brush again and go back in the gray. Look up for me. And just to secure this a bit, I'm going to add just a little bit of powder over top of that pencil because wax and, uh, and powder working together give you longevity. Okay, so let's pull back and let's pull forward. And you can see how it's brought her eyes out and the blueness of her eyes is, uh, is showing up too. Okay, so now I'm going to go in uh, with the, the same foundation product, only a couple of shades lighter. And I'm going to use kind of like a fluffy dome brush for this. And I'm going to go into that area right here, that triangle shape that we want, because we're not going to use contour on Mamselle. We are going to use just highlighting and just highlighting in the center of the face. Just a bit, and down the center of the nose, and right here. And we need an extra little bit of dab, will do ya, right here. Wherever there's discoloration, if it's very severe, you can take your sponge and wet it, dip it into your dual finish powder, drop it on, let it dry and then go over it with some powder, the, it, with the dry powder. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. <laughs> okay, now I'm also, while I've got this same brush in my hand, I close your eyes. I'm just going to lighten under your brows just a wee bit. And in the corners of your eyes. Because as we age, having our eyes lightened up counteracts what nature's doing. And I think I'm going to use just a little bit of um, the same product, only a couple of shades darker. And I'm just going to go down the side of her nose. This is just if she feels like it. It certainly is not a necessary thing to do, but um, just, just to contour the nose a little bit. So there we have it highlighted. And now we're going to take some blush. Your standard classic pinks, peaches, uh, colors of that type are, are really good to use. And, um, but the trick is not to do too much. I'm gonna use a, you know, kind of a foundation, fluff, whatever. Don't get hung up on brushes. Don't, don't make it a great big thing. You only need about three, four, five at the very most. 
And the only thing that I would say it's really important is when your 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 um, flat edged angle brush be flat edged. Okay, so I'm just going to dip and dip. I'm not doing that sort of thing. And I'm not, there's no such thing as when you smile. When you smile, you put product on, then you don't smile, then the product's sitting in the wrong place. So I'm just going to slightly go in a curved C shape. And what you can do, especially for those of us that are over 21 clothes, I'm going to sweep over each eye with a little bit of the blush. Okay? And if I have too much, I just put a little bit of foundation on. Okay, so if we move back, we can see how everything's nicely in balance. The only thing we need to do now is top it off with lips. Okay, I'm going to use the number 55, which is Petal Pink, I think, from Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour for our contestant here today because it's it's a it's a lovely natural pink and just keep your lips still now again with older lips because there's a tendency for them to feather and bleed. This lipstick is fantastic for not letting that happen. When it's on, it's, it's on. It doesn't bleed, feather, transfer, none of that stuff. And what I've done is gone a little bit outside her, her lip line because as we age and our lips thin out, just, just leave your lips, yeah, that's it. You're not used to getting this done, eh? <laughs> now I'm making sure that I'm going right to the edge of her lip, right to where the roll is and slightly over the roll. love that color on you. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take a shade 1110. <laughs> what I'm going to do is add a lighter shade in the center to give it that 3D, just look into the camera for me, that 3D look. I'm Just keep your lips together. I'm just going to add it into the lower center part of her lip. And this will bounce the light and just make them look fuller and richer. So we'll wait a few seconds before we put the um, balm on. So let's step back. Now, isn't that lovely? What do you think? Oh, it looks lovely, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what we're going to do is take a look at the hair and then we're going to have a, an overall viewpoint. I'm going to add, actually, now that I look at it, a little bit more uh, underneath your eye. Uh, just because I think you can use it. You're looking so good. And you're 87. What an inspiration you are. And a half, 87 and a half. 87 and a half, <laughs> yes, yes. Let's get that clear, right? That's important. <laughs> I'm ha almost half through that next year. Doreen has been blessed with some beautiful thick hair. So I want to just, because I have somebody with short hair, because I'm always working on long, I want to just show you, when people are looking for new hairstyles in a simple way, there's really simple ways of creating a new hairstyle. And one is bringing all your hair forward. And texturizing is really good. So if you turn to the side, look how gorgeous that looks. 87, are you kidding me? And look at the other side. Now, you can either have the bangs all down, if that's your preference for a look, or let's go the other way. Let's take the hair and go back. Remember, texture 
in the hair adds a lot. And what you could do is gel this and then bring down just pieces like this mm -hmm. as you like. The other thing is, if you could turn to the side for me, Doris Day. Uh, <laughs> oh, my girls will love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to back comb the root. As many of you know, that's what I constantly talk about. Where you want the, the fullness is at the crown. So three or four strokes at the crown like this. And then a little bit of spray, just a, just a flexible hold hairspray will do it. And sometimes, turn even more, just putting your hands up like this and spraying gives you the texture that you, that you may be looking for. Now, what I like to do with this, I'm, I'm going to bring Doreen's hair back more. So I'm going to spray it and then use my fingers for the most part. And I see a, 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 a gap in here where it's sitting flat to the head. So I'm going to go in with the, the comb and just back comb the root and take that flatness out. So you see, no curling irons, no blow dryers, none of that stuff, just schmoosh and go, right? That's the way we like to live our lives, right? Right. <laughs> so, I really like bangs on you, I have to tell you. So, I'm going to come around to the other side. Spray. And smush. So, turn to the side for me so we can see how that looks. And you know, when you lift the hair up and back like that, it gives the illusion of a higher lifted face. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Instead of getting the knife out, get the comb out. And get the fingers going. And get the fingers going, yes. I really like it messy mm -hmm. on the top for you too. So because your hair is thicker here, you want to make sure that you, f you fill up the crown at the back here. So you just back comb that up so that it balances out. Make sense? It does to me. Good, good. And then with my fingers, spray my, my hands first and then go in and texturize some pieces. Instead of spreading or in spraying your whole head of hair, just spray your hands and let your hands do the work of the hairspray. Make sense? Yes, it does. Whoops. Yeah, one's falling out. <laughs> well, See, if, that, if that were me, I'd be crying. Because <laughs> hairs one, three, five, seven, and nine really count. <laughs> okay, so what I, what I like about this now, turn to the side. Mm -hmm. You can see it has a, a lovely shaping that is, that is lifting, your, lifting your whole head. And you've got nice balance coming through the back. And that's just one hairstyle that uh, I think looks good. But like I showed you, you can take all this and move it all over the place. I think it looks nice the way it is. You like it the way yes, it is? Yes, I like that. What do you think, girls? <laughs> it's okay. okay. <laughs> Doreen is so upset that you know she thinks she's going to spoil this, and she's not at all. <laughs> anyway, Doreen, thank you so much. I think you look absolutely lovely. Uh, did you enjoy the experience? Oh, wonderful. I've been looking so forward to this, you would never realize. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Anyway, Doreen, our wonderful model today, 87 and still moving forward and filling up life with wonder. Thanks so much. See you next time.